Oh, hey, thanks for showing up, eh? <laughs> All right, thanks for joining me here again. Things are rolling along here in the Power Mods shop. We're just Power Mods and away. We're just gonna go over these carbs really quickly. Take a look at them, make sure everything's tickety-boo. I did run these through the um, ultrasonic bath last year. But we're gonna take a look at them anyway. They sat for a year. Who knows what kind of fuel was in that tank. And I'm gonna change out the choke plungers as well. Because sometimes those leak. See what happens? Take a look at that. I don't know if you can see that plunger. You see that little rubber on there? It's, it's got a little compression mark from the inside of the carb. Now that gets a little bit too much compressed and then fuel starts to leak by it and it starts to run boggy because it's running too rich. You don't want that. So the one the little broken part, I don't even know what side these go on. I really don't care because on these carbs, they should be the same. Make sure you use a, an extremely clean work surface, work area. I'm sure you have one just like this at home what I will do, I will put that down, okay? That's it. We're not some fancy dancy shop here. We just get stuff done. Oh my gosh, well that's not a, that's a Torx for God's sakes, man. You gave me a Torx, James. I have a great video online of how to rebuild a Makuni carburetor. It's old school. I don't even think I was talking in that video way back when. Maybe some of you prefer that, I don't know. But anywho, go in there, check it out. You gotta run these things through um, an ultrasonic cleaner, you really should. It's a way to do it, or some kind of a bath for them. I get a lot of guys who ask me, you know, Louie, I still got a bog, I cleaned my carb, I don't know what's going on. I said, and I know, usually right off the bat, okay, so what do you mean you cleaned your carb? Well, I took it and I sprayed it and I, went inside it and cleaned it out as well. Oh, see, I don't like the feel of that filter or that gasket on there. It's sticking, I don't want to wreck it. What's going on? What's holding that? It's just dry. Just a little dry old gasket. Yeah, there's no fuel in there at all. Oh yeah, yeah, okay, that's what holds it. That little old ring there. I put new ones in last year. That's right. That makes sense. So yep, yeah, they ask me, all right, ask them, you know, did you clean your carb? Yes, I did, what'd you do? I sprayed everything and sort of cleaned everything up with some carb cleaner. That's not cleaning a carb. When you clean a carb, you have to strip all the brass off it. So all these little jets here, bang, bang. There's a pilot jet inside there. It's your main jet. It's attached to the, I don't know, for, that's a jet nozzle. I think down in there, I think that's what they call that. Then the thing, there's a, there's a little piston on the end of you know, your um, cable. There's a piston and then there's a needle on that. You don't have to worry about those so much. Oh, there's another uh, little air screw right here. You know, see that? You know, you pull all that stuff out, you clean everything. And if you really want to do it right, you go and you buy new pilot jets and main jets. Now, I did that last year, and I think, you know what, I put everything back together and I didn't even run it. Everything looks pretty darn good. That float looks a little off, though. I don't know if you can see that. See the little float lever? The little float lever should be perpendicular. It's close but it's sort of sagging down a little bit. And there's a little minute adjustment that can be made right here. Do one of those. Nope. Sometimes when you put a new needle and seat in, which I did last year, if your machine is flooding a lot, that needle and seat will get you every time. It's a tricky bugger. The needle and seat will allow too much gas too much fuel in the bowl. Oh, and I like that. 
That is parfait. Uh, you can also pop these little floats out. Sometimes older floats, brass floats, used to get a little hole in them because they were sort of soldered all the way around. And they would suck up some uh, fuel and you wouldn't get the right kind of lift. I go down. There we go. You wouldn't get the right lift from the uh, floats. So these are good and clean. I had set these carbs up to factory specs as well. Go online, they're all over the place. Set that air screw or the fuel screw up depending on what kind of carb it is. You gotta do that as well. I even put new gaskets on last year because I'm pretty sure I ripped the old ones right out of them. When it comes to this, to this uh, air screw, um, before you pop that out, screw it in, figure out how many turns it is, like the last setting that it was at. So there's half a turn, full turn. So that's one full turn that is out. Half a turn, full turn. That's where I'll set that one. I'm just gonna see if this is the same. Pop this one apart real fast, take a look, see inside there. And when you're done cleaning these, you gotta use compressed air to blow everything out. If you don't use compressed air, it's not gonna work, boys. I'm telling you right now. You're gonna have water, something in those passages. When the uh, air starts flowing through there really fast, the water will freeze up, things will frost up on you, passage will get blocked, who knows what's gonna happen. It's gonna run boggy, not gonna run right. It'll blow all that excess stuff out of there. Just even looking through these uh, carbs, I could see right through the pilot jet. Like I said, I don't even think I ran this after, uh, after I rebuilt these last year. Yep, still super duper clean. Super duper Louie clean. That one to set up bang on. So these are ready to go. So we didn't really have to rebuild these carbs. But you can look back at my videos, uh, a lot of the sleds I've worked on, I've rebuilt the carbs. 700, I'm sure I've done it on some 800s, Elans, all kinds of stuff. Those are the key and basic principles though. New jets, new needle in seat, or it's not even worth your time taking it apart, boys. I'm telling you right now. Just my opinion. Now, you do have to be careful on some models, uh, some skidoos because of uh, fuel mixture issues, they would run different size jets from side to side. So they'd have a 190 on one side and a 180 on the other, something like that. Not good. You can't mix those carbs up when you put them back because you'll be running not right. This one we don't have to worry about. I'm gonna put these new plungers in. These ones here, they're quite worn, indented. Not good, all you do, you can see there's a hole in there. Push that in. Give her a little twist. It comes right out. Take the new one. Slip it in, pop it over. in. Nice, right? We're going to put these little throttle pistons back in here. The needles. And I'm just going to take a quick look to see if they're kind of eyeball synced. That just means that they're sitting at the same height so that they'll idle at the same and uh, I don't know, the same, uh, the same air flow, air fuel flow going through there, I guess you'd say. And um, at full throttle, of course, that they both open up fully. And they'll tell you in the manuals as well where they should be set.
check this out. You want to make sure that both of them, number one, that they both open up all the way when you open the throttle, right? right? And that they're both about the same distance opened, which they are not. Which they are not. That's okay. So I need a 10, I think there's a 10 mil wrench behind you, Jamie. One of those little ones over there. Okay, so what I've done is I can just slip that drill bit through there. This one as well. I'm pretty sure this is going to idle pretty high. But at least what I can do it gives me a ballpark range. I'm going to tighten this up now. You can also put that, you know, a smaller drill bit in through the other side. Whatever. I'm doing it there. I'll start it up and I can just back those off the same amount of turns and that should be okay. If this were a high horsepower motor, it'd be a little different. Um, you know, there are sinking tools that you could use. I just don't have one. And I'm also looking for that wrench. There it is. One of those. One of those. Okay. You leave those loose so we can get our air box in. And these throttle cables need to go into position. There we go. And I need to put this fuel line from each carburetor to the fuel pump. Uh, the battery is not the right size and that's annoying. But we'll just put it in for now. Um, yeah, I'm gonna put that in for now. Put that there. Get in my face. We should check for a spark. We can do that in a minute. Check to make sure we got spark on both sides. And the spark should be the same. Nice big bright blue sparks, not orangey, orangey porangey sparks. Porangey? Not the brightest, but you know what? I think we can live with it. Battery's not the strongest either. No. We'll give that a try. I mean, if we have to, I have another coil we can pop on it, see how that works. But that is a good sign. Fresh fuel. Got to put some good stuff in there. A lot of times, you know, sleds don't run well. Gas doesn't last very long now. It's only good for a few months, two, three months. You leave it over the summer, it's not going to make it. Here it comes. Sounds good. Except for the recoil. My wife, uh, she says, you know, when you come home sometimes, I got this smell. I don't know what that is. Uh, it's, um, I say it's just the scent of a man or a woman who likes to ride two strokes, right? Yeah, well, there's nothing much more we can do with that right now. Um, I think what I'm probably going to need to do is well, not breathe that in. Speaking of cancer, I think what needs to be done next is number one, I got to get my clutch back together and get that on. That affects everything. Um, it needs that rotating mass on there. Um, I want to bring it outside. Might have to play with the uh, screws on it a little bit, and then we'll see what uh, what happens after that.
But that's it so far. The next video will be buttoning everything right back up together, uh, rebuilding those clutches, and then uh, we're pretty much done this series. I want to thank you guys for coming by as usual. I want to run this thing again. Something's still not right. <laughs>